Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be using Space Engine to talk about unusual vampire stars. We're also going to visit a very very famous globular cluster where these stars might reside. Welcome to What The Math. Alright, so they're not really vampire vampire stars, but they are stars uh, known as blue stragglers. Blue stragglers are a type of an unusual star that seems to be a little bit brighter and a little bit more massive than it should be. Theoretically, a lot of stars form in similar regions in similar ways, but there are once in a while stars that seem to not fit that pattern. Now, before we do all this, let's actually go visit a very famous globular cluster known as 47 Tucane. It's in Space Engine, and it's approximately 16,700 light years away from us. We're going to point at it, and we're going to go to it. So it's actually in the direction of a small Magellanic Cloud, but about 10 times closer than the small Magellanic Cloud. And you're going to see that globular cluster any second now. It's actually very easy to see in the dark skies, even without any binoculars or telescopes, because it is so large. There are millions of stars in this globular cluster, and this globular cluster is also relatively bright. Um, so if I actually look back, I will see the galaxy Milky Way. So we are kind of uh, on the outskirts of the Milky Way. Even though this is actually part of the Milky Way, and this is the largest globular cluster in the Milky Way, it is not uh, in the um, main region of the Milky Way. Now, this particular global cluster is very well studied, it's very well known, and a lot of really cool things have been discovered here, including very recently an intermediate black hole. Somewhere in the middle of this um, global cluster is actually a black hole that's only about 2200 masses of um, our sun. Normally, black holes are either much smaller, so somewhere about 15 to 30 masses of sun, or much larger, millions of masses of sun. But for the first time, we've located one that was just um, in the middle. It's basically uh, 2,200 masses of sun, and it's somewhere in the middle of this particular global cluster. We don't really know much about it other than it's somewhere there. We also found at least 25 different pulsars. We found various uh, ne uh, neutron stars, and uh, we've discovered a lot of other cool stuff. But we're talking about these very unusual stars today known as blue stragglers. And we're going to go and try to find a bunch of them by basically dimming all of this and looking for the brightest possible stars. There's um, at least um, 21 of them, well known, but they don't actually have any names. So anything that's very bright and very blue is very likely... Um, so the blue hyper hypergiant here, it's very likely to be a blue straggler. Now, all of these stars can only be found in the middle of globular clusters because the more massive and the older the star, the more likely it's going to be in the center of the globular cluster, which kind of makes sense. You know, the older you live, the more likely you're going to move toward the middle where all of the mass is. But here's the thing about these unusual global cluster, um, these unusual blue stragglers. The thing about them is that they seem to be only about 2 billion years old compared to other stars around them. So many of these blue uh, giants and many of these um, very bright stars are going to be somewhere about 10 to 12 billion years old, but blue stragglers seem to be only one to two. Here's actually one example. Um, it doesn't actually say the age here, but this binary supergiant, blue luminous supergiant, is going to very likely be approximately one to two billion years old. Now, what is happening here? And why exactly did I call them vampire stars in the beginning of the video? Well, what's happening here is actually their origin. Their origin is very, very unusual. They seem to actually, especially in this case, uh, in this particular binary star, they seem to be fitting off their partners. Basically, this star is probably eating up a lot of the material from this star, and basically, as it eats up all of the mass from this smaller star, it acquires more life energy. It, it seems and appears younger and more massive than it should be because it essentially eats up the other stars. And sometimes it happens in binary systems. Sometimes it happens through a collision 
with another star, and sometimes it happens um, via passage with another star. So I'm going to show you all three of these um, in Universe Sandbox Square. So here are the three simulations um, as they might have occurred in real life. So we have a collision event here. This is situation number one. Then we have uh, a situation where a binary star feeds off its partner and basically eats up all of the mass and acquires all of this energy to live long and happy. And lastly, we have a situation where a star passes by and possibly uh, leeches off some of the mass and basically acquires it for itself. Now, in this particular simulation in Space Engine, you see that there's also planets around them. We can actually look at these planets by clicking right here and we can even go and visit some of them so most of these are going to be ridiculously hot and as you can see living on these planets hypothetically would mean that your your night skies would be very very bright there's so many stars around you because it's a globular cluster that looking into the night skies here would be actually quite incredible but here's the thing today we actually are almost 100 percent positive that uh, most of these if not all of these stars and globular clusters actually have no planets. We've tried to find many of them. We've tried to find at least one of them. We've tried to actually look for them for many, many years, but so far we've discovered none. And it suggests one thing. It suggests that um, the planets may actually form in systems with high metallicity. Basically, as long as the star has a lot of materials other than hydrogen and, and um, helium, so including things like oxygen, including things like um, silicates, in that case, maybe, just maybe, this particular star system might have planets. But a lot of these stars and globular clusters have low metallicity. They don't, they don't seem to have anything but hydrogen and helium in them. And for that reason, we think that maybe, just maybe, none of the, or at least um, almost none of the stars in these globular clusters might actually have any of these planets that, and, or any of these moons that you see me showing you right now. So maybe, just maybe, this is all hypothetical and doesn't actually exist. So these stars might be all alone. And the fact that they actually collide with each other and the fact that they actually interact with each other so much also means that any planetary systems here might be actually easily disrupted and would basically create a lot of rogue planets instead of actual planetary systems. Now, um, we've studied at least one of these blue stragglers in a lot of detail. Now, I don't actually think it, it does exist in this simulation, but here's another uh, blue straggler right there. Um, the blue straggler by the name of BSS-19, and BS stands for blue straggler, of course, um, has a mass of about twice of all of the other stars in, in or most of these other stars in this system. And BSS-19 um, seems to have an unusually high rotation rate. And that high rotation rate is very likely because uh, it basically absorbed its partner planet. So let me just accelerate this. Uh, so as it... Uh, eats up the, the star companion it basically transfers all of the mass to itself and then eventually it absorbs the partner and as the partner collides with it it gives it extra um, rotation speed and so we think that this is why bss19 actually spins like 75 times faster than it sh than our sun so it's very unusual but definitely kind of cool as you can see, as you can see, all of these um, exoplanets here have very high temperatures. This is because all of these, or most of these blue stragglers I'm looking at, are basically highly, highly energetic O-type stars. They're very, very highly energetic. Um, now, let's actually see if we can find some really cool-looking uh, planets here, even though they're very hypothetical. But for the most part, that's essentially all we know about blue stragglers. We know that they're very likely formed by a collision or absorption of mass from their partner, essentially vampirizing or cannibalizing their partners and this gives them appearance of youth they look only about a billion years old where in reality they're actually at least 12 maybe even older 12 billion years old or older and as you can see um as i'm actually flying through the system a lot of these stars are actually really really close to each other uh most of the stars are within about one light year away from each other or even closer so there's a lot of interaction between them there's a lot of collisions happening there's a lot of vampirism if you want to call it call it that and this star right there is actually surprisingly bright i want to go take a look at this blue hypergiant uh this is definitely a blue straggler by um, by definition, so it's a super, super gigantic 
very energetic, very massive star that's a lot more massive than it should be in this particular region. So this star probably ate its neighbors or possibly just uh, leached off some of the mass from someone else that had passed by. Which also suggests that, look at that, it's all alone. No planets whatsoever. So by definition, that would very likely be a blue straggler. So this is what blue stragglers are. This is where you can find them. They're basically in every single globular cluster in our galaxy. And you can usually find them by flying around Space Engine and just by looking at various globular clusters that you can kind of see. They always appear very easily um, in Space Engine. So those globular clusters will all have these blue stragglers, at least a dozen, maybe even more of them. And you can see them because they're very, very, very bright. But uh, Tucana 47 is officially the most well-studied global cluster we know. And this is the one where we've discovered a lot of really cool stuff. And we'll still keep discovering a lot of cool stuff in the future. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to introduce Tucana 47. I also wanted to talk about these vampire stars, also known as uh, blue stragglers. And... Um, just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what is out there in our galaxy and how awesome and how incredibly mysterious our galaxy actually is. Anyway, thank you for watching and hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully you'll subscribe if you still haven't. Maybe even share this video with someone who enjoys watching this kind of stuff and come back tomorrow because you're going to learn something else interesting using video games. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.